Brothers and sisters, welcome to all of you for this fourth day of Novena in honor of St. Anthony. St. Anthony, the miracle worker. But much more than that, we Franciscans have been insisting that he is not sought just for miracles, but for the exemplary life that he lived by preaching the word of God, with the conviction that he had, with the love that he had for the word, for God's law has been amazing. These days in our reflections we heard how Saint Anthony was truly a servant of God's word. We continue in the same spirit even today. On this fourth day of Novena, we also celebrate the feast of the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. And therefore beginning itself, I want to greet you all. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, brothers and sisters. We begin with the word of God, followed by a reflection and then the prayer to St. Anthony for the fourth day of Novena. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to Timothy, second letter, chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead by his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be urgent in season and out of season, convince, rebuke and exhort, be unfailing in patience and in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own likings and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander into myths. As for you, always be steady, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Yes, dear brothers and sisters, on this fourth day, I found it fitting to reflect on this beautiful reading or the exhortation that St. Paul gives to Timothy. In fact, in this short passage, there are two parts. One that is extended to Timothy directly and the other explaining to Timothy the nature of people or the situation or those regions which are going to react to Timothy. The first part that is directed to Timothy is so much true in the life of St. Anthony himself. We shall take a few of those aspects and see how St. Anthony resembles Timothy of that day. First and foremost, St. Paul tells Timothy that I want to charge you in the name of Christ. I want to charge you. So the preaching of the word in other words is a charge given to Timothy that day. Saint Anthony in his life received this aspect of his life as a charge from God. It is not a wish. It is not that his talent. It is not because he is educated, he is knowledgeable of scripture. Saint Anthony takes the preaching of the word as a charge from God. So this beginning, this initiation is an important aspect. Therefore, both when he was with the canon of the Augustinians or the order of Augustinians and then joining the hands of St. Francis, St. Anthony had this burning experience within him. 
Jeremiah had the similar experience as well because Jeremiah was charged by God not by an ordinary revelation but God himself not because he felt people are bad he has to preach not because he's talented he's young he's energetic but like Jeremiah like Timothy Saint Anthony felt that he had been charged by God to preach the word and this exhortation by Paul goes in another level when he says you must preach the word be urgent in season and out of season I love this expression of the Bible the word of God is to be preached urgently there should be a enthusiasm in preaching you cannot sit on it and go about urgency there are people waiting they want to hear they want to listen there is such a lot that we can do so much of opportunity if not in the open church through the media don't stop be urgent beautiful expression father in season and out of season whether it is COVID-19 whether it is a calamity such as cyclone whether it is a, a problem of earthquake whether it is a problem of transport don't be bound and limited by these but rather be urgent in season and out of season in other words there is no limit to the time of preaching the word and Saint Anthony was one such he would preach the word in all places in all circumstances in fact he was initiated as you know to the preach the word of God to the public in a in a very odd manner without even being told before but man was burning he had it with him and therefore for Saint Anthony there was no time which was more suitable and less suitable every season every time was suitable to preach the word Saint Anthony was one such great character of the 12th century who went about preaching in season and out of season and what did he do in his preaching he is so important one as the word of God would say he was convinced about the word of God and he had the duty to convince others and he did it in a very special way he did it to so many people especially those unbelievers those so-called heretics those who are on the margins those who are feeling that they had an option to come or not to come to church he would talk to them eye to eye face to face telling them the power of the word and changing their hearts and minds changing their hearts which were hardened Saint Anthony had that power so he would convince in first place second what would he do he would rebuke there were people who had to be corrected because they were not doing well they were not in the right path they were sinful Anthony had the duty as we heard he was charged to rebuke through the word of God and thirdly he would exhort them like him while he would convince them he would rebuke them he would not leave them there he would exhort them now counsel them with the wisdom of God wisdom of the scripture as to how to live this beautiful life that God had given to each one of us and therefore when there were people who were very arrogant he would tell them how to be patient and kind when he would find people who were in sin he would tell them the mercies of God and how they can overcome and live a better life Saint Anthony was a man of season in season out of season 
word of God had to be preached. What is more, he would always remember that he had to be patient in all this time. And he was. He wouldn't get distracted. He wouldn't get disturbed. He wouldn't give up because there were some people who wouldn't listen to him perhaps intently. At times when people wouldn't give him ears, he would go to the birds of the air or he go, would go to the fish or he would go to the animals just like his master Saint Francis. But he wouldn't give up. He was patient. Second part is about the people. What kind of people of that time and today? There are always people who are itching, the word of God says, itching their ears to listen to novelty, new things, what we call today as prosperity gospels. They were a fact that day, they were a fact even today. There are people leading such groups. They think that preaching the word and promising them all the time money, property, success is the gospel truth. In fact, that is not the way. So, Saint Anthony would preach the word to the people, even those days, who were itching, willing to go to new type of preachers. People who would not agree with the church. People who thought they had better truths. People who thought that they had better ideas. People who would quietly but wisely deviate from the truth. And I don't think that is the right way to be faithful sons of this church. St. Anthony in that way was a faithful son of this church. And to all the sons and daughters who are itching to hear novel things, he would exhort them to remain faithful to the church. For there were always people who were itching to hear new things. Today, on this fourth day, brothers and sisters, two things we remember. One, St. Anthony, convinced of the word of God, was charged to preach this great word in season and out of season. Convincing, rebuking, exhorting. In all this, he was patient. God had given them this great virtue to endure. Because he knew that there will be always people, at least some of them, who would not accept and refuse. Secondly, there has been always a group of people who wanted to go away, distract themselves, itching their ears to novelties, to new things so-called, deviating from the reality of the church, reality of the gospel, going out to the so-called prosperity gospel. Even today, some of us may think that we know better than the church itself. We don't, in fact. Church is a much bigger reality than just you and me. The more we work at it, the more discovery we have. So on this fourth day of Novena, I wish that in the spirit of St. Anthony, you and me also be charged up, enthusiastic to preach the word, to be convinced about it, to rebuke when necessary, to exhort it very patiently. But we are all need to be charged up by God. And secondly, let us know what we are looking for in the Gospels. Don't run away. Don't take to easy things. May St. Anthony, the lover of the Gospel, intercede for us. And now we shall pray the Novena prayer to St. Anthony. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you ask for miracles, death, error, all calamities, the leprosy and demons fly and health succeeds infirmities. The sea obeys and fetters break and lifeless limbs you do restore. While treasures are lost are found again when young and old your aid implore. All dangers vanish at your prayer and dire needs do quickly flee. Let those who know your power proclaim, let Paduan say, these are a few. 
the sea obeys and fetters break and lifeless limbs you do restore while treasures are lost and found again when young and old your aid implore to father son may glory be and holy spirit eternally the sea obeys and fetters break and lifeless limbs you do restore while treasures lost are found again when young and old your aid implore and now we have the prayer of special intention or particular intention i salute and honor you o powerful helper saint anthony the christian world confidently turns to you and experiences your tender compassion and powerful assistance in so many necessities and sufferings that i am encouraged in my need to seek your help in obtaining a favorable answer to my request for the favor i seek in this novena we pause and offer our personal intentions of this novena O holy saint anthony i beseech you obtain for me the grace that i desire our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil Hail Mary full of grace the Lord is with you blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb Jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen and now i want to bless all of you who make this novena the lord be with you Brothers and sisters on this feast of the Holy Trinity I pray that the Father Son and the Spirit may make home in your hearts may almighty god bless you and keep you may he show his face to you and be gracious to you may he turn his countenance to you and grant you peace in abundance and may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit amen